Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Emily Schmidt. You don't know me. Um, I am one of the ag teachers at Chickasha. I teach with my husband Colby. Um, we've been there four, going on five years now. Um, and I teach um, the horticulture class. Um, I have two sections of it really. Um, if you guys, which you, many of you probably do know, um, Shirley Stevens was a longtime ag teacher at Chickasha, renowned for her horticulture program, and that's what kind of inherited a lot of her stuff. Um, and in the community, the horticulture program is still a really big deal. Um, and so that's why I teach two sections of it. There's like 20 to 30 kids in each section. So it's a really big, yeah, you're not supposed to, but um, depending on enrollment, that's usually what we kind of are dealing with. Um, and so it's still a really big program there, and we like to um, use some of her stuff, but also integrate some new stuff. And so that's kind of where this desktop lawns. Um, deal kind of came in. So, and I don't know, some of you may or may not have TikTok. Um, what different that's not the same, um, you know, we plant seeds, we grow vegetables or grow flowers in the greenhouse, do the same thing over and over. Um, and I actually stumbled upon this lawn guy that um, what he did is he worked at home and he had this immaculate lawn that was like a putting green and then he got sent back to work and he missed his lawn. So he made a desktop lawn and he mowed it with scissors and had a little uh, putting hole on it. It was beautiful and I was like, that's what we're gonna do. So that's kind of how it kind of came upon it and I also um, found some lessons from New Mexico FFA too. Um, and so I combined the both and this is not a great example by any means. It's been abused this summer, but um, this is kind of one of our students' examples of Bermuda grass about three or four months old. Um, and that's kind of where this lab came in. We use ICEV. Um, you can use CIMC. They both have turf grass units. This ICEV unit is ancient, so I don't know if any of you guys have ever used that one. Um, the videos are from like 1980-ish, and they're wretched. So um, without trying to reinvent the wheel, I wanted to try and do something that was different and that engaged our students. Um, this year, for some reason, I don't know what it was, I had a lot of boys in horticulture. And usually when I teach horticulture, I do a lot of floral design. And by Christmas, they were pretty sick of doing wreaths and arrangements, things like that. And so um, I asked them what do you want to do for the spring semester, just kind of pick their brains. And a lot of them were on the golf team and they said, we want to learn about turf grass. So that's kind of where the connection for this came full circle. And I was like, okay, we can do a pretty neat turf grass unit with you guys. Um, and so that's kind of the birth of it. Um, I'll pass out. This is the lab that I kind of created. Mason's going to have a Google Drive that has the actual lesson from New Mexico FFA. And then they have an alternate lab to um, I just use Bermuda they use different types of grasses and compare germination rates which you know if you're doing agri science fair that's kind of a component maybe you can stick in there um, we just use Bermuda it's easy to grow hard to kill that's kind of the way that that went Okay, so this lab is pretty basic. Um, I teach 50 minute classes. I easily let it fill up a 50 minute class, um, especially when you've got 20 ish kids filling up tins and planting soil or planting seed. It takes a little bit. Um, but if you don't have a greenhouse, you can still do this. So my greenhouse is ancient. 
and not in the greatest shape. Um, but if you were at a program that did not have a greenhouse, this is still really easily usable. Um, everybody has a door outside and you create many greenhouses essentially to get your grass to germinate and grow. Um, and so just kind of to start off um, before we actually create it, um, and what we, what we essentially were doing was observing how uh, Bermuda grass germinates, how fast it grows, and what it looks like when it comes out to a seed head. Um, and we, then we utilized that and we cut off parts of the seed head and dissected it. I learned that um, we're an urban-ish school um, and I sent out my students to go find grass on our campus that had a seed head on it to dissect and we came back with a lot of trees <laughs> and flowers um, and so I was like yeah we definitely have no idea what it looks like so um, it kind of has a dual purpose to the lab in that part and it's really cost efficient all of this was about 50 ish bucks and it's enough for about 40 people so um, everybody that's on a budget I get it um, the only thing is potting soil I already had in my greenhouse you can go to Atwoods, Lowe's, whatever, grab potting soil. This is just from American Plant. It's not anything special. So um, some people had a question about if there's a special kind of soil. No, I mean, you could go out and dig a hole and throw it in here, and it's probably going to germinate pretty good. Um, my husband had one that was, like, trimmed and beautiful, and if anybody knows him, he's very much into the lawn care stuff. And our two-year-old went and dumped it and destroyed it. So... <laughs> He was using it to like play with his cows and his horses and I don't know what possessed him, but he just dumped it and destroyed it. So that's why we have the one that's been neglected in the backyard. Um, it doesn't look as great. Um, so when we get started, um, I have Bermuda seed. Uh, you guys can get this from just about anywhere that carries lawn seed. Um, we have Ross seed in Chickasha. They donate this. If you can get them to donate it, great. If not, this, this runs about 10 bucks. So, um, and this covers a thousand square feet. So it's more than enough. Um, and when we initially did it, I've done this with our eighth graders and our horticulture class. Um, the horticulture class, I let them use a couple different varieties. So we had zoysia grass, um, we had fescue, we had some wheat grass, lemongrass. Um, just kind of let them play with the different kind of seeds and see what they look like. So <laughs> all you need really is a bag of Bermuda. Um, some sort of growing media, and then misters or spray bottles. I stole these from our hog barn this morning, so um, just make sure there's no prolate in there because you may not have very much seed germination if you have prolate in there. Um, and then some sort of cake pan tin. If you have extra seed flats in your greenhouse, if you have a greenhouse, those work great. Um, I got these at Dollar Tree. So um, anything with more solid bottom than just a regular cake tin. So trial and error. Um, I bought the really flimsy ones at first. Kids filled them, they held them up, they collapsed in the middle and seed went everywhere. So we've, there's been a lot of trial, trial and error with this one. Um, and also in the original lab um, from New Mexico, they said to use cling wrap, or not, yeah, just the regular like plastic wrap. It does not work very well. Um, it doesn't attach very easily. Um, and what it does is it actually sinks down and will suction to your soil, pull seed up, and then there's just all kinds of issues. So, um, as a mom, I live by Preston Seal. Um, any of you that have small children may know that if you put this on the front of their shirt and they spill, you can just pull it off and then you don't have to worry about it. So, I live and die by Glad Preston Seal. <laughs> that was the best advice I've gotten. Before, so. <laughs> so, I actually just, I pulled this out of my kitchen, but... Um, this works great with these tins and it causes a greenhouse effect that keeps the seeds warm, holds in moisture, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, and there's, if you guys are in like the Ag Teacher Buddies Facebook group or anything like that, um, there's been a couple versions of this. And I saw one Ag Teacher just put it in his greenhouse, turned his misters on, and he flooded everything. So if you do it that way, that's great. I just suggest you miss them every couple of days just because. Um, and you can put holes in the bottom if you'd like. Um, honestly, if you just missed it every few days, you're not going to have a lot of water retention issues. Um, and then a fork, spoon, skewers, whatever you may to kind of rake the seed in. Um, 
the way we did this with our upperclassmen, a lot of them are seniors. Um, we did this towards the end of the year. A lot of them were going on to college or tech school, somewhere where they knew they were going to go. And so we actually let them plant seeds in a design and they grew, like we had a bunch of UCO students and OSU students and they grew their grass in different designs. And so um, some of them planted like Bermuda and fescue together and it didn't really work out so great. So, um, but we kind of just give them free reign because they're a little older, but with our eighth graders, we definitely said you only do Bermuda. So um, we'll kind of start our mini lab here. Um, everybody's gonna get a 10, you can, there's a marker if you want to write your name on them. If not, everybody, I trust you all not to steal yours. So <laughs> we have a lot of sick issues and with <laughs> stealing projects. So <laughs> I have to be careful. Every dollar tree is created equal. If you guys want to scoot up to the table, you can. That way you don't have to dump it in your in your lap. Huh? They were individual, but I mean, with the school discount. At Dollar Tree, it was like 30 bucks, maybe. So, you can buy the these come in the multi pack at Walmart, but there are structural issues with these. So, that's why I went with the roasting pants. We, we dumped a lot of dirt in my classroom over the last couple months, so it is what it is. Um, and I also I brought these, I'm not really sure. You guys can use a scoop. In your classroom if you've got one these were also at dollar tree just as a way to scoop and fill my kids made a huge mess when they filled their tins um and so from our trial and error um if you guys want um we can kind of do like this table and then i'll work our way back um so you'll fill your tins with about an inch to inch and a half worth of soil when you do this in class if you want a drainage layer you're you can add rock or sand something like that as a drainage layer if you want um, just for cost purposes, I kind of didn't want to buy 100 bags or 100 pounds of sand just for 30 people. So, um, so if you guys want to start with this table, um, you can just take your scoop and just fill about an inch to two inches worth in your tin. Um, and then you will mist it down, make sure it's wet, and then you can have a seat. Does that work? Oh, I guess. You guys want to okay, has everybody got... Everybody has a tin. Everybody's got it. Hey. <laughs> okay, everybody's got their tin full. Everybody sprayed it, right? Okay, if you didn't spray it, it's not the end of the world. Just your seeds may move around a lot. Um, and this, you can utilize this if you're trying to get into like the turf grass CDE. This is a good way to grow your samples so your kids can ID it. But um, I'm... I'm a horticulture teacher, but I'm not a plant person by nature, so um, I will kill everything given the opportunity. Um, so once you get your your grat or your soil prepared, um, and I had students in my advanced hort class, um, especially like those golf boys, you can take your fork and aerate the soil. They moved around and made mounds. One of them made like um, a little sand pit. I mean, you can do as you please the really you can do whatever you'd like and it's going to make it unique each way um, if you have an area where you don't want soil say you want to put a design in um, you can trace it and use your fork to kind of create a basis or outline for a design it's kind of an easy way for them to feel creative and express themselves um, i also have i have skewers too you guys got a fork if you want a skewer you can i rarely use these with the kids because they usually poke through the bottom but um, yeah, that too. There were a lot of um, skewer houses made. So um, if you take your if you take your seed according to the directions, you can spread it in a thin layer, 
Um, if you spread it too thick, you're going to cause germination issues. Um, the seeds are going to compete, and probably nothing will grow. So that's kind of our other um, trial and errors that I had a kid put about three cups worth of seed on his. I didn't see it till I got to the greenhouse and looked, and I was like, oh, that's bad. So, uh, But you can just kind of spread it um, however you'd like. If you'd like to do like a pattern or... Um, Anything like that, you can use your fingers. You've got leftover seed. I don't want it bag. Anyone doing a design? I'm trying to see. Sorry, we're not that nice. One of my UCO kids, like, he, like, cut out the UCO logo and put it on and then put seed around it so the UCO was actual dirt. It was pretty neat. <laughs> Did you have any of them pack sand after it grew? Uh, they got it. They got them back. Like, we started this right before state convention. So, like, middle of last week of April. Um, and they got it. 24th of April so what they did with it between then they got they got to go in the greenhouse and trim it and work on it and fertilize it um, but that's kind of I know some of them have like mini golf kits and that's what they put like mini golf balls and stuff in it um, once you or I'll kind of give you guys a minute to if you're doing a pattern once you get your seed I'm sorry what no, you don't use the whole cup. I gave you guys more than enough. This covers like a thousand square foot. So. I was say each one of your cups probably. Oh yeah, your seating rate. This, this. If I had kids that were smart enough, I'd probably would put. <laughs> that's supposed to be the ag business class. They could do that. But yeah, that's a good. It's a good way to integrate. Um, core classes into it too, especially if your school uh, pushes that kind of deal. Ours, ours pushes the STEM and AG pretty hard. So. That's what I was going to do. If you need more seed. <laughs> this is all going to go at the school farm. I'm just going to throw it in the field. <laughs> Oh, my bald spot. <laughs> Shake up. <laughs> Funny thing about our uh, Colby sprayed weeds, and uh, the sprayer had a leak, and so everywhere that he drove the lawnmower, <laughs> there's a line of dead grass. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, if everybody's still working, kind of working, um, you can use your fork to mix in your grass seed into um, your top layer of your soil. If you did a design, um, it can stay on the top layer of the soil. It's not going to hurt it too bad. So um, if you do use different varieties of grass, just kind of be cognizant of their requirements for germination and things like that. That's why um, our fescue and Bermuda kids did not do so well because they're combating germination temperatures and environmental factors um, and that's kind of another thing just to add in if you do use cool season grasses um, you might not want to do this when it's 90 degrees outside just because you probably won't get a whole lot of grass out of it so um, and also just I grew up in fescue country I kind of understand how it grows um, it's going to need a cooler temperature but it also like shade so if you put it in straight sun after it starts to germinate and grow it's probably going to die so just kind of some thoughts on there and if you guys have you know anybody that works at a golf course that you know of that's a great resource um, they can come in and teach this too um, Colby loves the golf course he loves anything and everything golf um, and he brought in a guy with the eighth graders that kind of talked about why it's important to understand what grass you're using and what variety you're using and why. Um, most of our yards in Oklahoma are Bermuda because it's easily taken care of. Um, why we don't have Kentucky grass in our yards because it's probably not going to survive the summer. Um, and so that's kind of another great way to do it. Um, with my upper class, we just kind of let go for the, the hour and I let them do whatever they wanted. Um, and then once you get done, 
we'll go ahead and I'll pass these sprays around. You can moisten it down again if you feel like you didn't get it moist enough the first time. Um, I'm sorry, what? Oh. <laughs> I was like, what did I say? Um, <laughs> so once, once you get it sprayed, yeah. Y'all are definitely going to have to stay after. <laughs> You'll go ahead and put the press and seal on, act as a tiny greenhouse. Um, the important thing with this is to make sure that the first couple days, especially if you put it in your greenhouse, um, I'd probably check it every day just to make sure it doesn't dry out. It needs to stay moist. It's going to take it a week-ish to germinate, depending on um, the variety you get. I know our our fescue took a while to germinate. It was it was uh, more of a train wreck than a success for sure. Um, but I would, if you don't have hog sprayers, Atwoods has the other version for like six bucks. Um, we used it as a class activity, like the first ten minutes of class. The kids knew to go out to the greenhouse. They checked their seed beds. Um, they'd water if they thought it needed water, and then we'd go in and do whatever. But we use this over the variation of two weeks is how we kind of utilize this. And I kind of tag-teamed it with going through the turf grass less than itself. Um, just that way it had relevancy and we weren't, you know, um, doing like rose arrangements while we're growing turf grass or something like that. Um, and if you guys look at the back, there's kind of a data chart for the kids to keep on. Um, we, I have kind of like a little science notebook for my Hort class. Um, and so they just kind of stick this in there. Um, and this is the part that I stole from directly from New Mexico. Like, when, if you guys look at the lesson, you'll be like, oh yeah, she definitely copyrighted it for sure. Um, but every two to four days, or every two days, they're gonna check it. Um, they're gonna check for if they've got any seedling height, um, color. We had a lot of variation in color, especially with the kids that did not water very good. Um, theirs tended to be a little darker. Um, the kids that watered too much, theirs were white. So uh, just things that they might notice that are different. Um, and if you get to the point where you can measure the width, uh, the widest part of the grass blade, um, we documented over two weeks, like I said. And then at the end, the kids fill out their review questions and kind of collaborate with each other. If you're wanting to introduce a way to do agri-science fair projects, this might be a good way to do an experiment to kind of get them used to um, the scientific method. Um, the New Mexico version of this, they actually do a couple different varieties and compare the growth rates of the varieties, the colors, and things like that. So it's very fluid lesson. It's a very fluid lab that you guys can custom and make any way that you want to. Um, but it's one that we, our students, really enjoyed. Um, and I enjoyed doing it in the last three weeks of the school year. It's warm. It's sunny. The kids like to go outside. It's a great way to break up the monotony of... Uh, I'm gonna say Shelby was talking to me. My classroom doesn't have windows, so if we can go outside, <laughs> it's a great day because we're down in the dungeon. Um, so if you guys need to moisten the top of your seeds, we'll kind of pass these around, um, and then you can come up and put your press and seal around the edges of it. Hopefully, if it doesn't fall up on itself, this is this is gold to me. Does anybody need to? To spray it again yes no if you if you don't watch your students or if you do this with younger students and they want to spray again um, fair warning they're probably going to spray their seeds if it's in a pattern and move them around and they're not going to grow in a pattern we had a pretty good test trial with this like 60 kids worth so there were some success eighth graders had a lot of failure. There. Okay, if everybody's still working, kind of working, um, you can use your fork to mix in your grass seed into um, your top layer of your soil. If you did a design, um, it can stay on the top layer of the soil. It's not going to hurt it too bad. So um, if you do use different varieties of grass, just kind of be cognizant of their requirements for germination and things like that. That's why um, our fescue and Bermuda kids did not do so well because they're combating germination temperatures and environmental factors um, and that's kind of another thing just to add in if you do use cool season grasses um, you might not want to do this when it's 90 degrees outside just because you probably won't get a whole lot of grass out of it so 
Um, and also just, I grew up in fescue country. I kind of understand how it grows. Um, it's going to need a cooler temperature, but it also likes shade. So if you put it in straight sun after it starts to germinate and grow, it's probably going to die. So just kind of some thoughts on there. And if you guys have, you know, anybody that works at a golf course that you know of that's a great resource, um, they can come in and teach this too. Um, Colby loves the golf course. He loves anything and everything golf. Um, and he brought in a guy with the eighth graders that kind of talked about why it's important to understand what grass you're using and what variety you're using and why. Um, most of our yards in Oklahoma are Bermuda because it's easily taken care of. Um, why we don't have Kentucky grass in our yards because it's probably not going to survive the summer. Um, and so that's kind of another great way to do it. Um, with my upper class, I mean, we just kind of let go for the, the hour and I let them do whatever they wanted. Um, and then once you get done, we'll go ahead and I'll pass these sprays around. You can moisten it down again if you feel like you didn't get it moist enough the first time. Um, I'm sorry, what? Oh. <laughs> I was like, what did I say? Um, <laughs> so once, once you get it sprayed, yeah. Y'all are definitely going to have to stay after. <laughs> You'll go ahead and put the Preston seal on, act as a tiny greenhouse. Um, the important thing with this is to make sure that the first couple days, especially if you put it in your greenhouse, um, I'd probably check it every day just to make sure it doesn't dry out. It needs to stay moist. It's going to take it a week-ish to germinate, depending on um, the variety you get. I know our... Our fescue took a while to germinate. It was, it was uh, more of a train wreck than a success for sure. Um, but I would, if you don't have hog sprayers, Atwoods has the other version for like six bucks. Um, we used it as a class activity, like the first ten minutes of class. The kids knew to go out to the greenhouse. They checked their seed beds. Um, they'd water if they thought it needed water, and then we'd go in and do whatever. But we use this over the variation of two weeks is how we kind of utilize this. And I kind of tag-teamed it with going through the turf grass lesson itself. Um, just that way it had relevancy and we weren't, you know, um, doing like rose arrangements while we're growing turf grass or something like that. Um, and if you guys look at the back, there's kind of a data chart for the kids to keep on. Um, we, I have kind of like a little science notebook for my Hort class, um, and so they just kind of stick this in there. Um, and this is the part that I stole from directly from New Mexico. Like, when, if you guys look at the lesson, you'll be like, oh yeah, she definitely copyrighted it for sure. Um, but every two to four days, or every two days, they're going to check it. Um, they're going to check for if they've got any seedling height, um, color. We had a lot of variation in color, especially with the kids that did not water very good. Um, theirs tended to be a little darker. Um, the kids that watered too much, theirs were white. So uh, just things that they might notice that are different. Um, and if you get to the point where you can measure the width, uh, the widest part of a grass blade, um, we documented over two weeks, like I said. And then at the end, the kids fill out their review questions and kind of collaborate with each other. If you're wanting to introduce a way to do agri-science fair projects, this might be a good way to do an experiment to kind of get them used to um, the scientific method. Um, the New Mexico version of this, they actually do a couple different varieties and compare the growth rates of the varieties, the colors, and things like that. So it's very fluid lesson. It's a very fluid lab that you guys can custom and make any way that you want to. Um, but it's one that we, our students, really enjoyed. Um, and I enjoyed doing it in the last three weeks of the school year. It's warm. It's sunny. The kids like to go outside. It's a great way to break up the monotony of, uh, I'm going to say, Shelby was talking to me. My classroom doesn't have windows, so if we can go outside, <laughs> it's a great day because we're down in the dungeon. Um, so if you guys need to moisten the top of your seeds, we'll kind of pass these around. Um, and then you can come up and put your press and seal around the edges of it. Hopefully if it doesn't fall up on itself. This is, this is gold to me. Does anybody need to, to spray it again? Yes, no. If you, if you don't watch your students or if you do this with younger students and they want to spray again, um, fair warning, they're probably going to spray their seeds if it's in a pattern and move them around and they're not going to grow in a pattern. 
we had a pretty good test trial with this, like 60 kids worth, so there were some success. Eighth graders had a lot of failures. Yeah. So, what we did was we left it on it till it showed germination and then we kind of popped it off. But just with that, especially if you have it in a greenhouse, you might watch for your soil to dry out just because greenhouse is like what 20 degrees hotter than it is outside and so it's going to dry out a lot faster if you don't have a greenhouse and you just stick them outside every day for a little bit you're probably okay um ours dried out real fast and we were watering like every day but if you if like i said if you use your mister system in your greenhouse poke holes in the bottom or put some sort of drainage because they will flood they will flood bad we've we had a, a lot of problems with that in the beginning um, and like after the first week, the first round did it, we kind of made adjustments to it. Um, but yeah, if you guys can integrate, um, if you teach horticulture, um, there's a lot of design as aspects you can incorporate into like your land landscape design unit if you do stuff like that. Um, since our horticulture classes were so boy heavy, we did a lot of landscape design and turf um, this last semester. and. They took off with it. You know, a lot of people um, say boys aren't creative. I beg to differ. They probably did a better job than half the girls in that class. They just got really creative and they really enjoyed it. And um, if you guys have any questions, and like I said, I'll put the lesson up. I, if your if admin requires you to submit lesson plans or anything like that, you can just pop it over to them. And, um, and it's an adaptive, you can do it in the soil and plant section of like the eighth grade and intro to Ag 1. Um, just a way to kind of break up the monotony of this last year of being on the computer 24 7 is kind of how, how I felt. But um, if you guys have any questions, take them. If not, I hope you, you enjoyed it. So you just, like if you were to keep this long term, you just trimmed it with scissors. Um, scissors, uh, my esteemed student that had like, the putting green and things like that he brought in like the nose trimmers like the really tiny trimmer and he got that really close so he he like he would get to class like five minutes early and like check his lawn every day and like work around it and like he was so into it and he had a couple buddies that were into it too but they just used scissors but that's what you can use scissors um you can use a trimmer if you want if you let it go it's going to look like this and be pretty rough but um you know some of the kids are still taking care of them there's a couple of them that have them out at our school farm and i still see them like propped up on the ledge of the barn so they really enjoyed it and i mean if you had some sort of long-term experiment you wanted to do or agri-science project there's longevity to it, so it's not like it's going to die in the next, you know, two weeks like a petunia if you leave it. But um, that's all, all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Kind of.